Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a whiteboarding session about GSLP and Citrix ADC. This whiteboarding session is brought to you by Nords Citrix Networking. And my name is Johannes Nords. I'm a Citrix certified expert on Netscaler, Citrix certified trainer, a technical evangelist, and a consultant. If we talk about GSLP, we usually have more sites at least two, a maximum of 32. In my whiteboarding session, I have two sides, one left, one right. Now, the user is mandated to go to gateway.abc.com. To resolve the IP address, the user has to go to the DNS server, but the DNS server actually doesn't know. But what this DNS server actually knows? is the root DNS server. So we ask the root DNS server, but the root DNS server doesn't know either. But what the root DNS server knows is the DNS server responsible for COM. So this is the DNS server responsible for COM. And he asks the DNS server for COM about abc.com. But it doesn't know. It just knows the server for abc. Now, next we go to the ABC server and ask the ABC server for ABC, gateway.abc.com. Well, we could know, but actually uh, we have no quick influence on this. So if one of my two sites is dead, we will not be able to change it in a timely manner. So in will take about a quarter of an hour, maybe an hour. So therefore, we do its own delegation to our Netscalers, Netscaler 1, Netscaler 2, my two Netscalers. So next, the DNS server will query our Netscalers, gateway.abc.com. And now we get it in our hands. Now my net scalers will talk to each other. We have a protocol here. We call this protocol matrix exchange protocol, MEP. We exchange matrix. So we, we know the better side for the request. And we will reply with an IP address. So in this case, I reply with the 1.3.4. This will be forwarded to the client. And now the client is able to connect to the site. So this is my connection to load balancing v server and connect to the server. And my user will get data. Now everything seems to be brilliant. But what happens if this internet connection goes down? So the site is still up, it may be still there. So the next request is coming in. Uh, we will do matrix exchange and we will decide the left side is the better one. So this client will connect to the better side, but this is not possible because the internet connection is not there. Well, we could help by using monitor probes, just the same problem as we use with load balancing. We send via the internet, so not via our private network, but via internet. Well, in this case, uh, both Netscalers would think they are healthy, but uh, the probes to the other will fail. So they don't agree to the health state of the other side, the side they are facing. But this is not a big problem because uh, we will always query one of them and this one is the connected one and it will believe itself and not the matrix from the other side. And therefore it will return its IP address, not the IP address of the partner. Now everything seems to work fine, but we run into several other problems. One of the first problems we have to go into is my DNS server may probably cache. It must not, but it may. 
so we usually return with a time to live that's negative so it cannot be cached but what if the net DNS server caches yeah so this is a serious problem because the DNS server will cache uh, information that's valid no more so the user will connect to a site that's actually down and this will result in a total outage of our scenario we don't want this therefore we could reply with two IP addresses so both IP addresses just like we do with any kind of DNS round robin so we would reply not with 1234 but with 1234 and 4321 so the user will always be able to connect so in case the primary site is down we will just do the secondary easy we may use several load balancing methods they are the same methods we have in load balancing, traditional load balancing but in addition we also have proximity methods so it's all about finding the nearest possible data center but my question would be the nearest to what? we would think the client but that's wrong, we have no idea about the client the only thing we do know is the DNS server so it's the nearest to the DNS server well this leads us to the next serious problem so to the DNS server no, what if the user is losing Google DNS server so the Google DNS server will be 88888 for example now which is closer this one so this data center or that data center we have no idea we have two methods of load balancing we have a table based one so IP at range so and so is DNS data center 1 IP range so and so is data center 2 in this case they will be misleaded the other one is a dynamic one dynamic proximity closest round trip time type round trip time calculation is done by DNS query first so we will do a DNS query just to find out which is faster the second method if DNS query fails because it's blocked would be a TCP based DNS query but this may fail also in case this one fails we will send a ping if even the ping fails we will fall back to round robin